Hey everyone, it's Maria here, green makeup artist and green beauty expert. I'm here with another video this week. Um, and this is a topic that I've gotten a lot of great feedback on and I've done a Facebook Live in the past. So I was thinking, you know what, let's get this on YouTube as well. So today I'm gonna talk about um, makeup for mature skin. And I don't want you to think that uh, mature skin is in the 50s, okay? Um, depending on your lifestyle and um, your DNA um, and how your skin has been aging, this can actually be of concern um, at any point after 30, okay? So um, for me, this is kind of what I keep, uh, keep in mind when I do my makeup. And, uh, you know, I'm going to give you a couple of different options and you can kind of gauge if this is the right time for you to be using, um, you know, to be using this type of application and this type of products. And if it's time to actually change some things up. So you might be uh, using the same products um, and makeup products that you've been using since you were maybe in your 20s. And I think, you know, after we cross 30, 35, it's time to actually think about changing some of the products. So I'm going to focus on, um, I believe it's four main areas. I'm going to talk a little bit about the skin and prepping the skin for makeup application, because once those little lines uh, start appearing, you're going to have to um, be a little bit more vigilant on your skincare. Then I'm going to talk about, um, the, I'm going to talk about foundation, um, a little bit of color in the, on the eyes. Um, cheek color and lips. Okay. So these are the products that I think that you need to actually make some um, specific choices on what you're using. Otherwise, the, pro the products that you were using in the past might actually accentuate uh, dryness or um, any of those, um, you know, little aging factors that seem to creep in. So let's get started. Um, I've already prepped my skin with um, my my Graydon skincare, okay? So once you, um, you know, you start being a little bit more concerned with fine lines appearing and dryness, you need to switch to um, a creamier cleanser, okay? So I'm using um, Graydon's, okay, Aloe Milk Cleanser. Okay, so this is actually very, very gentle. It's a um, really, really beautiful product. It contains perilla um, oil, which is very hydrating. It goes on and then you can actually wipe it off with a face cloth or you can use a little, um, the little charcoal exfoliating um, sponge that actually is part of the skincare um, for Graydon, uh, part of the skincare, skincare collection. Um, and um, <clears throat> I feel like with the milk cleanser, that's gonna feed your skin and give you something uh, more back than another cleanser that I might, might actually strip the skin. You want your skin to be plump. You want it to, um, to be moist um, before makeup application and hydrated, I should say, lots and lots of hydration. Um, after that, I gave myself a, a bit of a mist just to, um, you know, dampen things up a little bit more. And then I went in with my Berry Rich, okay? So this is actually a fantastic um, moisturizer for um, night and day. And I'm gonna say day only if you are not actually um, going through you know, summer and you're not actually exposed to the elements, okay? So otherwise you're gonna be using um, something like this, okay? So the um, the berry rich is full of, um, you know, really nice antioxidants that come from like ingredients such as blueberry seed oil. However, elements, I think is actually, um, it's actually very, very nice for prepping the skin be before makeup application. So this is um, a defense for also pollution and um, of course the sun. So it's gonna go up, it's about an SPF of um, 28, and this is a mineral-based product, of course. So it has the zinc oxide, which is uh, fantastic for you know defending your skin against the sun. It builds that really nice layer um, um, on, you know, protective layer on top of the, the uh, on top of your skin to protect it from the sun. Um, the other thing too I wanted to say about elements is that it's um, not greasy. A lot of other natural um, sunscreens can actually be a little bit on the greasier side because they contain more um, of the plant oils. But this one actually has a really, really not modifying effect. And I think it builds a really nice layer um, on top for, for makeup, you know, preparing the skin for makeup application. So you could definitely, depending on how dry you're feeling, pair the two together. So you would do, um, you could do berry rich, 
right? And really nicely massage it into your skin. Um, and don't forget, you know, your eye area. And then after that, please, please use your sunscreen, okay? And make sure that the sunscreen that you're using is not slippery, it's not greasy, and uh, that it actually helps keep the makeup in place, especially if you're having, um, you know, difficulties keeping product on and, you know, seeing it slide throughout the day, that's not good. The, so I'm already prepped. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go in with my foundation. So what I want to say about foundations, okay, and I am going to use uh, Pura Nada's Tinted Moisturizer. I think this is fantastic for summer. They actually have the Prep and Conceal Foundation, which is a little bit fuller coverage. It is a beautiful product as well. But for me, I prefer this one just because it's lighter and I kind of want, um, you know, just a lighter, a lighter finish. So you would put a tiny bit. I'm going to, let's bring you a little bit closer. Okay, so I would do um, a pump. You can do a pump or two and you can just put it in your hand if you like, like this, all right? And then just take it and apply it. Now, the reason um, I recommend always using a creamier foundation is because as we, um, you know, as we get older and the little lines start appearing, you don't want um, any powdered product. You don't want anything that's, um, you know, I don't know, like oil-free, um, mattifying, um, and you know, you want to actually choose a foundation that's going to hydrate your skin. Don't forget your eyes. That's going to hydrate your skin and it's actually going to blend in beautifully. So the tinted moisturizer has so many fantastic oils in it that actually give you, um, you know, that really nice moist um, effect. So it contains rose hip and um, it contains rose hip and uh, grapeseed oil, pomegranate, sunflower oil. So these oils are full of uh, essential fatty acids and they help feed the skin. And it's actually going to blend into your skin. You want like a creamy, a creamy foundation and you want it to be hydrating. Okay. Now, if you're going to go and buy, um, you know, a, a generic, uh, generic brand from shoppers or something like that, and it says hydrating, please check the ingredients and see what it is that makes it hydrating. So just don't just go for the name because anyone can just put a label and say that this is a hydrating um, a hydrating sun, um, foundation, but how is it so, okay? So make sure that you're using a really nice hydrating foundation. Stay away from powders, stay away from anything matte, anything that's gonna accentuate dryness and um, make your skin look even more cakey um, and um, and dry and, um, you know, um, old. <laughs> because when things start collecting into lines, um, you kind of start seeing it throughout the day. So you want a really nice foundation, okay? So we did the skincare um, and then the foundation is key, all right? Um, then the next thing I'm going to, we're, we're not going to powder, okay? So keep that in mind. We're not going to powder. We're not going to use any powders today because that is not um, the best type of makeup for um, mature skin. After that, you want to use a bit of concealer, all right, just to brighten up the eye area. Okay, so I have here the concealers by Pura Nada. Okay, so these are the Prime and Perfect. These are certified organic concealers. And I'm gonna go and use Very Fair today underneath the eyes, just to brighten up the eye area a little bit and, um, you know, give a bit of coverage. And, um, and don't forget to do your eyelid. Okay, because when you do your eyelid, it actually helps prep it for the eyeshadow application. So you're never dragging. As you can see, I'm just using really, really gentle movements and I'm just really quickly tapping the product into, um, into my skin until it disappears, all right? And we'll do the same on the other side. Okay, so at this point, you can go and check and see if there's anything else happening for you. Is there, um, I don't know, a sunspot you want to correct? Um, and the other thing that I like doing is I like putting a tiny bit of lighter concealer into these nasolabial lines right here because they do tend to deepen 
So remember, anytime you use a lighter concealer in something that looks deep, it helps bring it forth, okay? So you could do it with a, a light, um, you could do it with a brush. Um, you know, for example, I have a fine brush here. You could use a little bit of your concealer and kind of put it into those lines. I know it's going to look ridiculous for a minute, but bear with me. Okay, and then you just go in and kind of just tap it. I'm going to use a bit on the bridge of my nose since I have it left over on my hand and a bit on the, my forehead. So these are the higher points on your face that you might want to um, highlight. Again, a creamy concealer. Don't use anything drying. So um, what we did here with the nasolabial li lines is just like an optical illusion, right? So something that's deeper, you want it um, just coming farther out. All right. So that's all we did. Now, all these products are oil based and they kind of um, complement each other really really well um, and you don't need to powder okay again I'm, I'm not gonna powder I might do um, a light 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 the lightest of dustings um, on top of the eyelids only just the lightest dusting okay um, on top of the eyelids maybe I'll give it a light light dusting underneath okay just be very very um, light-handed with this because you don't want the area to appear dry but I, I'm just gonna set the concealer, okay? That's all I'm doing here. Just a tiny bit, okay? And uh, to do that, you can use, of course, any powder, but I'm using um, one of Pure Nada's um, mineral foundations. This is, this is a powder mineral foundation, but of course, if you do it with a really light fluffy brush and you, do, and you are light-handed, it will just give you a, a super light powder um application okay so we don't want it heavy we just want to a little bit to set that concealer in place all right um so let's give the eyes some color all right so with the eyeshadows the things that you need to think of are again you want to go for a creamy satin finish stay away from high frosts anything that's super ref reflective is going to collect into those um, fine lines and it's going to bounce the light back which means it's actually going to attract more attention to those areas that you have the fine lines forming so i'm going to use um, just one shade today i'm not going to focus on um, design of um of makeup but um if you I, I would say you know stay away from super dark shades especially if you are losing volume around the eyes and things are kind of um you know receding more remember anything dark will make it recede even farther okay so just something soft maybe something that's a bit skin tone if that's what you're into um and then having like a fleshy skin tone eyeshadow is always great because if you wanted to go out in the evening you can do you can darken it up a tiny bit on the corners or apply some um you know an eyeliner pencil to give it that intensity um so again i always say less is more and you know you don't want to go for that kind of like darker um goth um look the other thing that you have to remember is too that you know as our skin ages the the it's not just the plumpness it's also color um, that we're kind of um, looking a bit more pale. So you don't want to be using um, a lot of grays or those darker shades that are actually going to make you look even paler or more aged, okay? So um, what I'm going to use today is this lovely um, color by Pure Nada. So this is, this is a satin finish. Okay, and this is nectar. All right, so um, these are uh, these these eyeshadows are actually made from minerals, so they have a tiny bit of a reflective quality, but it is a satin finish. Okay, so again, stay away from anything super shimmery um, that's gonna you know kind of date you. <laughs> you know, we're not in the nineties, <laughs> and that, that's gonna date you and actually accentuate aging. All right, so I'm gonna do the one side. All right, so just I'm just doing the entire eyelid. Don't forget to get a little bit into the inner corner, um, you know, just to open up the eyes. All 
All right. And if you wanted to use eyeliner, of course, this would be the point that you're gonna um, you're gonna do that with um, at I guess. All right. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna go do my eyebrows. Okay. As we um, age, eyebrows kind of tend to disappear even more. So if you do have really fine eyebrows and you're finding that the hair uh, color is changing, definitely you need to put eyebrows on. I mean, right now it looks like I have barely any makeup on, um, and I guess it is a little bit minimalist, right? What I have on, but when I, as soon as I do the eyebrows, you'll see that it's like instantly boom, like my face is there. Okay. So I'm going to go do the eyebrows and I'll be right back. Okay. Here we go, everyone. I'm back. So my eyebrows are on. Can you see what a huge difference it makes? So again, I'm not going to focus on the eyebrows because I've done other tutorials on this, but all I want to say is that you just make sure that you're giving a bit of um, emphasis on your arch here. Everything you do with makeup for uh, mature skin, you need it to be lifting, okay? So of course, it's going to depend on the um, shape of your eyebrow, but try to avoid going straight across and try to avoid coming too far down on the edge right here because anything that you do going downwards is actually going to drag your eyes down okay so you want to kind of like lift you want to lift a little bit with um everything that you do and uh, make sure that your um the eyebrow at the end here does not go past the um the corner of your eye all right like that all right so moving on let's give this face a little bit of color okay so we, we kept it pretty light on the eyes, but I just wanted to say again, just to recap that you need to go for a satin eyeshadow, um, you know, and stay just with um, colors that are complementary to your skin tone, creamy, satin, stay away from frost and kind of those kind of like really frosty, reflective pastels, especially. Okay. So warmer colors are nice, um, but stay away from anything dark, kind of goth, um, anything that's going to take the shadows um, in your, on your face and kind of bring that out. Right. Because if you go for grays or any colors like that it's it's gonna do that um okay so let's move on to some color i want to talk about blush okay so with blush again we're gonna stay away from powders so remember that we only powdered um underneath here a little bit just because we have concealer on but for the um you know for the cheeks we're gonna stay again with a creamy color okay so we're gonna use a creamy blush and um recently i've uh, discovered the living libations lip uh, lip shines or lip shimmers but these things are way more than lip shimmers okay they are actually amazing as blushers as well so there's two colors that i have here okay this uh pinky shade is the pink um sorry it's the pink ladies lip, pink ladies slipper slippers sorry plural slippers <laughs> and this one here is moccasin flower and moccasin flower is an amazing bronzer so because it is sunny and hot out there, I'm going to do a bit of a bronzer and maybe mix a bit of this um, on the um, on the apple of the cheek. OK, so other other options, um, again, stay away from powders. Other options would be any of those kind of like multi sticks that are out right now that can do a couple of different things. Um, it might be a crayon that it can that can be applied on the lips or on the on the cheek, um, the cheeks as well. Right. So go for multi purpose products and just remember keep it creamy keep it um keep it hydrating okay so i'm gonna do a bit of this um the bronzer and i'm gonna just keep this one a bit higher so maybe here are the hollows of of my temples And of course, you know, I mean, I'm going to say this for every video, everything I'm using is Canadian. Um, Living Libations comes out of, I believe it's Halliburton, Ontario. It's a fa fantastic brand. They have so many amazing products. So definitely check them out. I'm going to do a tiny bit here on the forehead. If you have a large forehead, um, any women's wa women watching with a large forehead, you, you can do this. Just a bit on the hairline. OK, because that's where the sun, the sun would have hit you. All right. And then if you have, um, you know, something that's pink here like this. So I kind of always like to just play up the cheekbone a little bit and just keep things a bit higher up. Again, as I said, it helps lift the face and just warm up this kind of eye area.
but also um, applying a bit of um, something here on the fleshiest uh, parts of your cheek is really uh, fantastic and very youthful. So I'm going to do pink lady slippers there. And um, try not to smile too big, okay? Because when you smile, things lift. And then as soon as you don't, they go down here, especially with gravity as we as we age. So just find, like, where is your, your fleshiest part of your cheek? Right there. Okay, and give it some color. That can definitely look very youthful. And just blend it in and just make sure it kind of blends in if you have been using uh, a bronzer. So these products are very light in texture and they just blend in really beautifully. Great for the beach. You can do your lips as well. Take them with you traveling. Okay, and then again with blush, it just depends how intense you want it. Okay, so here we go. This is the pink lady slippers applied on the fleshiest part of the cheek. Okay, so I'm going to go um, do my mascara and then I'll finish up with um, talking about the lips, okay? So hold on tight. I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. We're back. Okay, so I've just done mascara and you can see that that really um, darkens things up. Definitely apply a couple of layers of mascara. Um, please curl your lashes as well and try and stay away from harsh products such as waterproof mascara. I know that a lot of women think that they need it, but removing that stuff and uh, what it does to the lashes is not good, especially as we get older, um, our lashes are not multiplying, okay? So take care of them. Um, today, I use the Pura Nada um, Natural Mascara. It's a fantastic product. It um, definitely stays uh, put, okay? And it feels really, really nice on, has some amazing ingredients as well that help take care of your lashes, all right? So I look a little bit more put together, right? So we have this. So let's talk about lips. Um, again, lips are something that you need to take care of. Um, a lot of little lines appear around the lips. So make sure that when you're moisturizing, that you're bringing it down to your lips. If you have um, uh, some really nice oils at home, like jojoba or rose hip, give them a little scrub once in a while with a bit of sugar from your pantry. It's very, very easy to do. And just make sure that the skin is constantly, um, you know, moisturized and plump, okay? What's gonna help with that a lot is actually using a nice creamy lipstick with um, moisturizing ingredients. So today I'm going to use um, Pura Nada's uh, Raspberry, which is a really nice um, vibrant berry color. I really, really like it. It's lovely on, especially for the summer. And the Pura Nada lipsticks are vegan. They are, um, um, they are hydrating, they're moisturizing, and they also contain um, jojoba and other beautiful oils like that that actually help hydrate your lips, okay? So um, hydrating lipstick, stay with creamy. Don't go for matte. That is um, anti, that, well, that is, I was just gonna say, that's drying, okay? So that's gonna accentuate your, um, your lines and it's going to make it look, you're going to, it's going to make your look, lips look older. All right. So you want something that's going to smooth in and kind of blend in, fill in those lines that have been appearing and give you like, yeah, just a beautiful finish. Okay. So with the eyes, I know I told you to stay away from too many dark shades. Like just go for, for earth tones are really nice. Don't go too dark unless you want to, you know, go out in the evening. Then there's little things that you can do, right, to darken up the eyes. And especially, you know, if you use a pencil. But for the lips, I think this is where you can use a little bit of punch. So a lot of women are proud of their lips. Um, there's so many beautiful shades, especially when you're going through you know, warmer weather, you can have fun with those like orangey reds and, uh, you know, the vibrant kind of pinks and fuchsias. So definitely, you know, play up your lips, add a fun color. I think it's much easier to do than, um, you know, than sitting there and using three uh, different eyeshadows to darken up the eyes, okay? 
So uh, just to recap, all right? So for the skin, just make sure you prep your skin, use a cream cleanser, something that's moisturizing, something that's plumping. Um, after that, make sure that you're using a really nice hydrating cream, something that's gonna fade and nourish your skin, something that's gonna fill in the little lines and give that plumping effect. Don't forget your sunscreen, all right? Um, stay away from anything that's way too greasy, um, that's gonna, that's gonna, you know, cause the, uh, the makeup perhaps to slip around, okay? So prep your skin. After that, use a really, really nice foundation. It has to be hydrating. It has to give something back to your skin, okay? And, um, and help fill in little lines. Do not powder your foundation. Um, only do that if you're gonna use a little bit of concealer, all right? So again, these are the Pura Nada uh, Prime and Perfect. These are certified organics. They, um, they just came out a couple months ago. They're super cream and hydrating, all right? So be very, very minimalist with the powder. Powders accentuate lines, all right? So if you're gonna use the concealer, go in and just powder it a tiny bit. Um, after that, don't forget your eyebrows, okay? Fill them in for sure for sure, okay? Um, do a nice um, a nice application of mascara, a couple of coats, curl your lashes to help open up the eyes. Moving on to the cheeks, use a cream color. Whatever it is, uh, whatever brand you prefer, choose a cream blusher. And today we use um, Living Libations in the Pink Lady Slippers and Flower, and Moccasin Flower, okay? And then lastly, on the lips. Okay, use a nice, rich, hydrating look at ingredients okay hydrating color um don't go for frosts don't go for gloss all right um you know if you do love your gloss um what i was gonna say let's see where i put this oh here we go if you do love your gloss um and you want to give a little bit of fullness to the lips be very very vigilant on how you're going to use it because if you are getting the little lines around here things are gonna start kind of sliding out, but I would say just use um, one little dot in the middle of your bottom lip. Okay, look at that, it gives, it's, it's gonna make your lips appear fuller, okay? So if you think that you've lost a bit of that fullness, all right, do that, make sure it doesn't move around and uh, come out of those lines, all right? So, and then yeah, finish it up with a bright hydrating lipstick, okay? That's all everyone. Thank you so much for watching. This was um, a few of the tips for um, makeup for mature skin. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please let me know um, below. All right. I'll see you here next week. Bye-bye.